Hello, I am instructor Shaden German. I am a second degree black belt in American Kempo. And in this video, we're going to be analyzing scenes from The Perfect Weapon. It is a movie starring Jeff Speakman, who is a 10th degree black belt in American Kempo and a 9th degree black belt in Goju Ryu. He was both taught by Larry Tatum and Ed Parker. So I'm very interested to see where the Kempo shines through in this film. We're going to analyze the scenes as well as things that appear in the background and what they mean to me as a Kempo practitioner. So you can see back here we have the Kempo universal symbol. The eight major directions are portrayed in the picture with you being the point of origin in the middle this little cross right here and then all the other shapes are different ways you can move or defend so the hearts right here represent inward parries that you can use this to open a push attack the oval represents a method of breaking so there's a technique in Kempo called snapping twig someone's pushing you with their left hand and you are breaking the arm by pushing this arm on this side of the oval, this side, and boom, push the elbow, break the arm. The diamonds represent downward diagonal blocks, an inward block that goes down and across your body. And the circles represent obviously your foot movements, upping the circle to increase power. So you can see a lot of those different shapes represented in this universal symbol that all represent different moves that you can do in self-defense. <laughs> All right, this is a ritual we would do at the beginning of class. That's funny. This is a ritual we would do at the beginning of class called ab check. Uh, it's mostly about willingness to get hit. Because when you take a karate class, you need to be prepared mentally and physically to get hurt. And this guy, he ate it. Th th this guy. I don't know. I think he's going to be the star of a movie someday. There's the guy. Ooh, what technique is that? Alright, that right there is a Kempo technique called Five Swords uh, with the extension. So in Kempo, we have a set amount of techniques, but then when you reach Black Belt, you start learning extensions or suffixes on the end of those techniques to increase your arsenal teach you extra moves this technique right here is five swords with the extension which in our system is a orange belt technique Ooh, what was the second technique there because it looks like he's coming on the s that might be snapping twig yep that's snapping twig it's the technique we talked about earlier although it has a different extension than how i learned it but it looks like Snapping Twig, the one we just talked about with the universal symbol. Boom, breaks the arm. That's our oval movement from the universal symbol. Kempo is a combination of ancient fighting. Alright, I know, I know this is supposed to be the kid learning, but let's critique. First of all, you're going to have bad balance standing on a cushion. I know because I've practiced karate on my bed a lot as a child. Kempo is a combination. Although it looks like the kid at the top has better balance than the kid on the bottom. They both need to work on keeping their guard up. I don't think that was any specific technique. I think these two are sparring. Oh! Okay, I think this is the beginning of a technique called Detour from Doom. Block and punch at the same time, return with a kick. But I think uh, our Uki was a little bit uh, dramatic, so she didn't get the rest of the technique in. But that's okay. A lot of Kempo, it's a misconception that Kempo only works when the attacker stands still. The truth is, Kempo is actually effective enough to where most of the time you're not going to get the whole technique out because your opponent's already going to be subdued. So in this technique... Let's slow it down. In this technique... She blocks the kick, she punches to the face at the same time, and then she kicks to the groin while it's open with the leg up. So, let's be honest, if you're getting punched in the face and kicked in the groin, you're not going to want to fight anymore. This technique ends with a back fist to the stomach, and then a hammer fist to the back of the neck. Uh, but I don't think she's going to get that through here because of the groin kick. And that is okay. In Kempo, you're not supposed to do the whole technique. The techniques are not supposed to be used in full in a real fight. 
you're supposed to use bits and pieces of the technique, like puzzle pieces, to adapt to any situation you may come across. Reaction. Ooh. Opponent. All right. This set of moves right here is called star blocking or blocking set one. And it practices a combination of the basic blocks in Kempo. All right. We have a training horse. Upward block. Inward block. Outward block. Downward block. Back elbow. And push down block. A lot of people, especially my students, question whether a back elbow is a block. It is primarily used to introduce the concept of blocking with your elbow, which hurts a lot more than blocking with your forearm, might I add, because I would know I've kicked many people in the elbow. So, in theory, you're in a fighting stance, someone's throwing a round kick to your uh, back, and you're throwing that back elbow back there in a deep chamber so that they kick your elbow with either their shin or the top of their foot and that hurts like hell so that's why the back elbow is here the only thing i would say about this kid's blocking set is his uh, uh inward blocks are in front of his eyes you never want to block in front of your eyes because that blocks your view front hook kick spinning hook kick spinning hook kick oh those transitions so he's older now. Nice. They gonna do the thing. Kempo can be the most lethal of the martial arts. That is very true. To control the power of Kempo, you must first control yourself. Train your spirit as you train your body, <laughs> developing inner strength. Okay. I don't know if this ritual is consistent for all karate studios, but we do this. And the reason we put our belts in an L shape like that, so you see his uh, old belt right here and his new belt right here. The L stands for four lessons. Loyalty, life, lie, and love. The reason we teach that is to focus on yourself first. So you're always loyal to yourself the most. You always love yourself the most. You live life with yourself in mind the most, and you never lie to yourself. So that's why we put our belt in an L. And it also helps on the next part of the, the ritual. We actually do it in the opposite order, but he's putting his forehead down to his new belt. That's to signify transferring the information that he learned as his previous belt to his new belt. So that's what this ritual is. Uh, at our studio, we actually do this on the floor rather than in front of a table. And I'm not very flexible, so that was always the hardest part of the whole test for me. They had the perfect opportunity to say the title of the movie here. The master of Kempo is more than an expert in karate. He is the perfect weapon. I fixed the movie. <laughs> I wonder if that's a consistent ritual too. His master gave him a ring when he got his black belt. When I got my black belt... Uh, I got a ring with the universal symbol on it. It doesn't fit me anymore and it's all rusty because I got my black belt when I was 13 and now I'm 18. So my fingers are a bit more pudgy than they used to be. Uh, but yeah, I actually like that ritual. I might have to follow that if I ever uh, advance any black belts. Well, we're right getting to the fights. Man. Right? <laughs> That's what you get for breaking the window for no reason, bro. Is there a problem here? Yeah, I guess so. In case you guys are wondering, throwing clubs at guns is not a Kempo thing. I've actually been theorizing recently, trying to come up with new techniques that uh, are for attacks that aren't covered in Kempo, and one of them is a choke with a club. And I want to see what this movie suggests we do about that in a Kempo manner. That's fair. And now he has two sticks. So, American Kempo does minimal training with two sticks, but
but we have a form called Form 7 that actually covers a lot of self-defense with two sticks. A lot of the techniques within that form are just open-handed techniques that have been modified to work with two sticks to teach that when you're wielding clubs, they're just extensions of your arms. Your hand is the new elbow, and now everything you can do with your hands, you can do with your arms. Or everything you can do with your hands, you can do with the clubs now, uh, except for grabbing. <laughs> Nice. Oh. Oh. That was a technique. This technique right here is a technique in Kempo called Crossing Storm, where you are in a reverse bow, and you're hitting them from behind over your head, and then you unwind with a figure eight strike. So you see he, he strikes four times in a figure eight pattern. Uh, that is a technique called Crossing Storm. Ready? Right here. Boom, boom, then unwind, figure eight, figure eight, boom. Just like that. A bunch of game. sweaty guys. This isn't gonna end well. Sneak attack. Come on, white boy. See what you got. I don't know who to root for. I'm Asian and white. I do know who I'm rooting for, he's the hero of the movie. Don't do spinning kicks in a fight with someone who knows what they're doing. Don't do spinning kicks at all. Because most of the time they don't work. Unless you have really high kicks and really fast kicks. If you want to have efficient spinning kicks, I recommend Taekwondo. Because Kempo, while it teaches spinning and flying kicks, they're not as effective as Taekwondo. I like how he's staying light on his feet here. He's stepping back and forth out of rhythm, and then when he throws the roundhouse kick, he's breaking that rhythm so the other guy doesn't expect it. Boom. Boom. Did he kick, like, behind him? Yeah, you have to be really flexible to pull that off. Okay, editing shade in here. I wanted to add that when you're at the peak of your flexibility, your leg starts to decelerate, which decreases the power. At the position his hand was checking his body, he could have easily thrown a back fist instead that would have been just as effective. Oh, that's a technique. That is a Kempo technique called encounter with danger where you're pushed down by an opponent and as they try to approach you you uh, kick them in the process of getting up so boom side kick back kick then he gets up boom I don't like these spinning kicks. Honestly, in that situation, I think Jeff Speakman should have got down on the floor as his leg was up and the unnecessary flying kicks just boom to the groin. I love the overselling in this movie. Alright, so the sound effects try to make Jeff Speakman seem faster than he is. This is the exact reason why Kempo gets a bad name. Not specifically this movie, but the onslaught of attacks that he's doing right now. Without the attacker really doing anything. I feel like the most likely outcome of this is either the attacker stepping off center lines to avoid the strikes. Him at least putting his hands up to brace his face. Or bringing a leg up to, to knee or kick. Or falling on the floor. I don't think he's going to stand there for that long unless man's crazy durable. <laughs> Movies love their outward crossing kicks. It's the coolest kick to uh, put on film. But I don't like the outward crossing kick. I mean, it does look cool. But there's better kicks he could have done in that situation. I know it's a movie, I get it. Sneak attack. Jeff Speakman gotta be more aware of his surroundings. 
Normally in Kempo, when you finish a fight, we do something called cross cover it out. It is a maneuver to the rear where you cross in front of your back leg and then step through. And in that maneuver, it gives you a 360 view of everything around you. So Jeff Speakman here, instead of looking where his opponent fell down, should have been in the process of moving away from all the people around him and gaining a view of ev everything that's going on around him. Come on, Jeff. Oh, he did the groin thing that I just talked about. Classic bar slide. Did I miss anything here? Ooh. That technique is ramming the eagle. Someone's grabbing you from behind, someone in front of you throws a punch, you block this guy while hitting the guy behind you at the same time. Boom. And you see, that technique is a lot longer than it's shown in the movie, but guess what? Kempo techniques work without you doing the whole thing. But this is also a movie, so it's very possible it might not work in real life scenarios. Just saying. Oh, another Kempo technique. That is Grip of Death, a front headlock technique. You're hitting the kidneys and the groin at the same time, grabbing their hair. I prefer a half fist to the throat, but this guy does a what looks like an inward diagonal wrist or a uh, forearm strike. Inward diagonal wrist. All right, let's see. A very violent Kempo technique, that is Raining Lance. It's a technique where against an overhead knife attack, and you are blocking with a cross block, and you are guiding the knife down in its circular motion back into the knee of the opponent. And then delivering an inward elbow, that's part of the technique. That's another Kempo technique called Piercing Lance, at least a blocking method. Uh, that he used, s spinning around on the outside of the knife into a back elbow. <laughs> Don't take the knife by the opponent if you care about them, but if you're in a 2v1 situation and you need the knife to defend yourself, I, I guess go for it. Uh, but you don't want to take the knife out of their leg because they're going to bleed out. Or they're more likely to bleed out at least. And then don't put it back in. Personally, I don't think that guy was in that much more danger in that situation. I think he just did that for fun. Oh. Kempo technique. That is a technique called taming the mace where someone's punching you against a wall. You're kind of like folding their punch and then using your elbow and the fold of the punch to throw them into the wall behind you. Boom. But luckily the wall behind him was tired so he didn't get hurt from it. He got hurt from that wall though. And then again they use sound effects to make him sound faster. Jeff Speakman kind of reminds me of Sean Kanan who plays Mike Barnes in Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. I can only hope Sean Kanan gets this many fights in Cobra Kai Season 6. Oh, Alright, this is a Kingpin situation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kingpin is a villain in the Marvel Comics universe who is like obese, but he's actually just pure muscle. So, normal attacks basically don't work on him, pretty much, unless you do a lot of them. But, it's like, these punches and kicks are bouncing off this guy, so I want to see how Jeff deals with him. Probably in some climactic Hollywood movie kind of way. So don't expect this fight to be realistic, I'm calling it now. 
Yeah, he's just eating those. This guy would be good at slap, uh, what is it called? Slap wrestling or slap fighting? Slap boxing? I don't know. That sport where they stand in front of a table against each other and sl take turns slapping each other. This guy would eat those. Against a bigger opponent, more now than ever, you want to go for their weak spots. Their knee, their groin, their throat, their eyes. Uh, take on all the weak spots. The knees, you can use to break their height zone if they're taller than you. Their throat, take their breath away. Their eyes, can't see, they can't fight. That's a quick silver method, right? Were those bowling sound effects? Listen to the hit to the knee. Watch this. That is bo those are bowling sound effects. Alright, so his belt's a knife. That's kind of cool. Editing Shaden here again. It would have been really funny if his pants fell off just then. What? So I think Jeff Speakman pretends to get hit here. That's why he's like stunned and making that face. So he throws it around the corner. Jeff Speakman makes a grunting noise to make him think he got hit. So he goes to check on the body. He's not actually hit. Boom kick. That was another bowling sound effect. Never let go of your weapon if you don't have to. Your opponent's going to use it against you. That also very clearly didn't hit him, but it's Hollywood, of course it didn't hit him. Classic gas pipe. Classic gas pipe distraction that happens in Hollywood fights all the time. There you go. He ends the fight with something he could have never reasonably predicted would happen. Yep, so uh, on that note, that was the perfect weapon. If you guys want to see more uh, movie analyses or fight scene analyses from a second degree black belt in Kempo's perspective, uh, hit the like button and I'll be sure to do more. But uh, for now, that's it and I'll see you guys next time.